Yes, uh, let's quickly analyze now the recommendations for peace in Africa. The first and foremost thing is training and advice um, and capacity building of the local partners. Now you need to understand that local security forces, police and uh, other paramilitary troops or military armies of the local uh, countries, they are the first line of defense uh, against terrorism and extremism. So United States of America, along with other uh, uh, extra regional powers, they are providing sustained synergized global response uh, and they are trying to eliminate terrorist groups in the region. And this particular, because they are fighting against transnational terrorist groups, so they, they need transnational support. So developed countries, they must come forward and they must provide training, advice, modern weapon and equipment, close air support for surveillance and reconnaissance, and of course, precision striking against the militants. Because if you kill um, civilians as well in drone strikes, so the situation would be worse and you are actually, you know, uh, it would be counterproductive and uh, more and more militants would join um, these types of organizations because they would uh, blame the US for killing innocent civilians and uh, it would be used as a propaganda as they used in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities must be enhanced in the region. And in this way, the Americans and the other countries, they can provide them with uh, satellite support, they, they can provide with them with their drone support. Uh, and these uh, particular things can improve their intel um, gathering and observation capabilities against military groups, their hideouts, their movement in the area. So that would also be a very important step to counter militancy and terrorism in this particular area. The, uh, we have analyzed in uh, most of the lectures, previous lectures of terrorism studies, that most of the problem, the terrorist organizations, they flourish in areas where there is underdevelopment, where there is more illiteracy, where there is um, a socioeconomic deprivation, where there is uh, no law. So um, the, these areas, especially Nigeria, Somalia, and other countries in the area, they are also facing huge uh, poverty because of the global warming, because of the other issues they are facing, human resource development issues, they are facing socioeconomic deprivation as well, illiteracy is rampant. So because of these factors, structural reforms um, um, are required and you have to bring positive peace in the area. If the structural reforms does not take place in the A region, you cannot establish long-term peace and stability in Africa. So the you know developed countries like America, European Union, um, many Middle Eastern powers, uh, uh, for example, they can come forward. China, of course, they can come forward and they can develop this region for regional and global security. So every country in the world would get benefit if Africa is stabilized. Institutional development is also very important because these states they are say, war ravaged countries civil wars, um, uh, you know, intermittent terrorist attacks, radicalization, extremism have totally destroyed the institutional development in the area, in the region, in these countries. So institutional development is very much important. Their, their political institutions, their, their democratic institutions, their political system, their economic system, it needs revitalization. And America, along with other developed countries, can help them establish their institutions in a right manner so they can improve and they can you know, um, play a constructive role in the economic development of their country. Education is the primary issue. And this is the issue which we have seen in many other parts of the world where terrorism and extremism is, at, you know, um, is rampant. For example, take example of Pakistan. In FATA, when uh, according to 1998 census, the literacy rate was 3% for women and 17% for, for male. And you have seen after 9-11, FATA was the epicenter of terrorism and extremism. Why? Because most of the population of that region was illiterate and they, they had no proper education. And because of that, uh, there was rampant socioeconomic deprivation. There was underdevelopment, unemployment, and these people, they were easy target for the militant groups. Same situation was there in Afghanistan, same situation was there in Iraq, same situation was there in other parts of the world where you can see terrorism and extremism flourishing. Now in the in uh, African region, in Nigeria especially, in Somalia especially, these societies, they were also facing, they are also facing problems in related to education and at least human resource development. 
So you need to work on this. You have to provide education. You have to uh, work on the human security aspect of these countries. Only then we can bring long-term peace and stability in the region. Counter-terrorism or counter-narrative is a very important step in countering terrorism because you need to defeat the ideology of these militant groups. IS, Al-Qaeda or other terrorist organizations operating in Africa, they are using Islam. They are using Islam as a tool to promote their, um, you can say, ideology, to get more and more recruits, and they are fabricating the Islamic injections. Islam is actually the religion of peace. And ulama Ikram from this, these countries must come forward. They must give verdict decrees against these terrorist organizations. And they must declare with, uh, you know, uh, explain Quran and Hadith in right context, in, uh, in right direction, and uh, give direction to the local youth and let them know that the Islam, which the, the ISIS, Boko Haram or Al-Qaeda is propagating, this is not the true Islam. True Islam believes in brotherhood. True Islam believes in forgiveness. True Islam believes in um, uh, uh, you know, uh, living in uh, peace and uh, serenity. So uh, you need to uh, understand Islam in the real sense. And uh, you need to understand that Islam totally denounced terrorism. And Islam believes in peace, love, and uh, brotherhood. So this is, this is something which the ulama Kram must uh, work on and try to counter the narrative of these terrorist organizations. Another important thing is dialogue and reconciliation. Dialogue with only those people who are reconcilable. For example, ISI, Al-Qaeda, these terrorist organizations, Boko Haram, they must be eradicated, Al-Shabaab militants. And many other political groups who are uh, fighting against the state for political grievances, they, their political grievances must be addressed. And dialogue and reconciliation, meaningful dialogue must take place in the region. And reconciliation must also take place in the region. So you can bring interfaith harmony, you can bring uh, inter, uh, you know, can say ethnic harmony, and you know, try to resolve these issues through dialogue and reconciliation. And effective military operation must take place against Boko Haram, al shabaab militants, and other affiliated terrorist organizations in the region. So Africa, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is very, very uh, dangerous place right now. And the threat matrix in Africa uh, is, uh, you know, uh, seriously impeding the regional and global development because terrorist organizations in the area, especially in Nigeria, Somalia, and many, many other Burkina Faso, uh, Sahel region, and uh, Horn of African region. So uh, the terrorists operating in this region are serious threat to the global peace and security. So as you can see in this map as well, so Al-Qaeda in um, Maghreb, Al-Qaeda linked militant groups, they are also operating in the region, Al-Shabaab and their affiliates, Boko Haram, ISIS, and many, many affiliates are operating in Africa right now. And they have made the hostage 1.3 billion population of Africa and 30 million square kilometer area is under siege because of these terrorist organizations. So all these regional countries, they must work to, to work together um, with the developed countries and try to resolve this issue. Um, so this was, uh, Al-Qaeda has become the epicenter of terrorism and extremism right now. The militant groups, they are trying to um, capitalize on the socioeconomic deprivation, the religious and extremism divide, political divide in the region. And this is the reason that all sorts of transnational groups are now getting shelter in African region. And they are trying to re-energize. They are recruiting more and more people. They got established their command and control centers. Their uh, safe heavens have been there. And now, they, once they establish themselves in the region, so they can carry out, you know, transnational attacks in future, which means slowly and gradually, these terrorist organizations, they are getting stronger. They are improving their capacity outreach and which is a serious threat for the regional and global security. The US and France are actively involved in this region and they are providing them, uh, these countries, local countries with all sorts of training, advice, diplomatic, public diplomacy, economic aid, military support through special forces, air strikes, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. But more and more support is needed. More and more deployment is needed because you cannot overcome um, uh, the problem in Africa with 7,000 soldiers. No, you cannot overcome these things with meager force. So don't make these mistakes. 
which you did in Afghanistan, which you did in Iraq, which you did in other parts of the world. So you have to deploy adequate troops, troops in the region. You need to train the local forces. Only then you can contain these terrorist groups. Otherwise, these terrorist groups uh, will pose a serious challenge for the regional and global state. There, um, uh, there is, you know, um, urgency, I would say, to invest on the human security aspect of the African region. And positive and structural reforms are very much needed in the area. You need to work on their economy, on their political institutions, on their food security, on their environment, on their personal development, community building, and health sector. So better governance, justice, equity, socioeconomic uplift, of the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable societies and management of resources for optimal use by all stakeholders would play a very, very important role. And this is the best way to bring long lasting peace and stability in a war ravaged African region. So human security is must and there is no other way to bring peace and stability in the region. Thank you very much, dear students. If you got any question, you can ask. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.